So the first one, we've got a broad beam, which is where you've got to go out wide in a big star position. The second one is a baked beam. All right, so you're going to go into a tucked up position like this. The third one is beans on toast. So imagine, imagine you're uh, beans on toast. You've got to go onto your backs into a flat position, big star flat position like this. The, the fourth one is chili bean. So chili bean is like this. <laughs> you're cold. Uh, fifth one is running bean. All right, so running bean is what we're actually going to be starting with. So running on the spot. The next one is jumping bean. Jumping up and down. And then the final one is spinning bean. We spin around in a circle. And then the last, last, last one is jelly bean, where you've got to go like that, like all jelly like. Okay? So we're going to get warmed up. Now, this is always part, always the first part of our warm up routine is that we've got to raise our heart rates. We've got to make sure that we get our blood flowing, our muscles warmed up, ready to start. Our exercise. So we're always going to start with a raise. All right. The next part of your warm up will be mobility. And then we're going to do what we call activation and some priming. So there's a little saying, a little uh, acronym that we use. It's called RMAP. I'm going to be testing you on that. So RMAP. So we've got raise, mo mobilize, activate, and then prime. All right. So we're going to raise our heart rates now. All right, so let's start with some running beans. Okay, broad beam. Good, back to running beans, always back to running beans. Okay, baked bean. Gotta be quick. That's it. And back to running bean. I'm just going to move this further back so you might be able to see me a little better. Okay, back to running bean. Okay, jelly bean. I see some funny arms, funny shapes. Okay, back to running bean. Okay, baked beans on toast. Lie flat as you can. All right, and then back up, back into jumping bean. Good, keep going. Okay, back into running bean. Okay, spinning bean. And the other way. Good. Okay, jumping bean. Okay, baked bean, quickly. Okay, baked beans on toast. Oh, back up as quick as you can. Jumping bean. Chili bean. Ooh. Ooh. Chili. Back into uh, running bean. Okay, the running bean is now becoming quicker. It's now like you say, bolt bean. As quick as you can. Okay, even faster. Come on, he's on the 100 meter sprint now. Back into jumping bean. Okay, let's get those arms going again. Okay, good. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to say them now without me doing it. I want you to do it. All right, let's have a look at you in gallery view. Let's see everyone doing it. Okay, baked bean. Good. Baked beans on toast. Nice. Back into jumping bean. Good, broad bean. Okay, good, now broad bean, now goes into broad bean with star jumps. All right, so let's go into star jumps. That's it. Good. Nice, like it, get them hands together. I'm gonna take a quick picture, show everyone at home. Very good. Okay, into chili bean. And then I want to see some jelly beans. Very good. Right, excellent. So 
just relax. We've got ourselves hopefully warmed up. We've got our pulse rates, uh, our heart rates up, and we've got ourselves warm. We're now going to go through some shoulder and body mobility. All right. Now, all of these exercises are part of what we would normally do in our pre pool routine. All right. And each session, we're going to go through a few extra ones. All right. Now, to start with, we're only going to go through two on each of our body parts. All right. But this is a great way to get yourselves mobilized from head to toe. Normally, you only got about 10, 15 minutes before your training sessions where you can do a warm routine. And you can use some of these exercises to, to do that. All right. It's not going to take too long. All right. But it's a great way to get yourselves mobile and warmed up. So to start with, we're going to go shoulders. Now, you can do these with, with bands, but we're going to do them uh, without to start with. So to start with, we're going to go internal and external rotations. So I want you to lie flat on the floor. And you're going to start off with your shoulders and elbows at 90 degrees in line with each other. And all you're going to do is bring your arms all the way forwards, as far as they'll go, and then back. All right, as far as they can go forwards and back. And we're just going to go 10 of these. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, this time elbows in at your side, and we're going to go in external rotations. So this time your elbows will go out to the side. Now it's important you're trying to keep your back flat on the floor. So I don't want to see your back lifting and your chest coming up. All right, let's get that back sucked into the floor. All right, and then just out to the side, just as far as your range of movement will allow you to go, and then back in. Okay, I'm going for 10 of these. It's so important that before every training session, you get your shoulders mobilized. You think about all of those swimming movements that you do involving your shoulders. You've got to make sure that they are warmed up before you get in. A lot of swimmers, as they get older, start to get tighter in their shoulders because of the amount of movement that they do, and they'll end up getting injuries. All right. So it's so important from a young age, you're learning how to mobilize your shoulders. So we'll do some more of the shoulder exercises in the next few sessions. The next one we're going to do, still on our backs, we're going to stretch out our lats. All right, so this is the big muscle that comes down the side of your back here. All right, so we're going to start lead flat on your back. You're going to bring your hands back to back. So your little fingers are touching, your thumbs are touching, your hands are back to back. And you're just going to bring your arms all the way over. Now you might be able to touch the floor with your little fingers. If you can, that's great. It shows that you've got good flexibility in your lats. If not, just go as far as you can and then back over. So we're gonna go 10 of those. Four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now, if you're feeling quite tight through these, you need to perhaps do a few more or practice a little bit more at home. And 10. But again, you use your lats, this muscle down here, you use this a lot when you're swimming. Whenever you're doing any pulling movements, this is the muscle that is engaging. Okay. Right. Next one, we're going to still focus on your back. This time, we're going to focus on the whole of your back. We're going to do an exercise called Happy Cat Side Cat. So we'll do it from the side here. You're going to start in a tabletop position. So knees at 90 degrees. You're going to be on your hands directly underneath your shoulders. And all you're going to do is curl up, tucking your chin underneath, curling up, making that arch as big as you can. And then going the opposite way, looking forwards and curling the opposite way with your back. All right, so then down and then back up. You're going to do five of these. 
So there, up and down is one. It's nice and slowly. All right, try and increase the range each time. Try and open up your back as much as you can. All of these movements we do as part of our land warm-up. You'll notice that all of the movements we're going to do are movements that you are continually moving. We're never holding the stretch. So it's always dynamic. That means that it's a moving stretch. All right, it's the best way to warm up. You do static stretching to increase your flexibility after your sessions. You do dynamic mobility before your sessions. And that helps increase not just the range in your muscles, but your, your joints as well. Right, next one we're going to go on to is legs. So the first one, I'm sure we've done this before, is going to be a hamstring raise. So again, leg flat on your back. All right, now to start with, you're going to have one knee bent, and you're going to bring the opposite leg up, and you're going to just hinge from here, and you're just going to hinge up, and then back down. Okay, so we're going to go 10 on each leg. You'll feel that stretch in the back of your leg, in your hamstrings. If you can manage to get your leg completely straight, that's great. Just go as far as your mobility allows you to do. All right, don't push too hard. We are only warming up. Just feel that stretch and then release. Okay, once you've done 10, change legs. Be interesting to see if you're feeling tighter on one leg than the other. Maybe if you've been doing a lot of running or cycling, you might be feeling a little bit tight through your legs as well. I certainly am. Good, right. Next one. So safe position, all right, this time we're going to bring our knee up to our chest and you're going to squeeze and then just release and tap the floor. Squeeze and then release. Now, if you're not really feeling that, then extend your opposite leg, put your toe up to the uh, ceiling. You'll just feel a little bit more of a stretch with your leg straight. So again, just 10 of these, just Holding underneath your knee, don't hold on your knee, just hold underneath your knee. Bring your, bring your knee to your, uh, your uh, chest and then release. All right, hold with both hands, feel that stretch, pull all the way in and then release. Okay, so 10 on each leg. Okay, good. Right, next one we're going to do. So this one is more of a full body movement, all right, and it's also part of the next phase of the warm up, which is if you think about it, we've done our raise, we've now mobilized, and now we're going to activate. So this is a good one for activating, activating your core and your hips, all right. Again, I'm sure you've done this before. It's called Superman's, all right. So I'm going to it from this side now to start with there are different progressions all right the first one all you can all you have to do is bring from this tabletop position just bring your arm up in line and then back down okay so you can do it simply like that if you find that's quite easy then you're going to go one leg and one arm out and then back together you can actually come in Bring your elbow and knee together and then extend. And if you are finding that really easy, you can do it in a press up position. All right, but I'm not going to recommend it today. All right, especially as we are only warming up. Let's start probably in this position. All right, so if you can, one arm out, leg out, 
We're just going to go five on each side. <clears throat> All right, it's really important when you're doing this, it's controlled, it's slow, shouldn't be rushed. Let's do it in time with me. You've got to make sure that you're keeping a nice long flat back while you do it. Okay. Okay, change if you've not already. Okay, right, and the last one, which is going to lead us into our main set. I'll just tilt this up slightly. Okay, so the last one is going to be what we call a hip hinge. All right, now this is really important for, particularly when we get into doing more dive work off the block. Some of you've done it before in our dive clinics, and that is learning how to hinge with your back straight. So you're going to go from here, start with your hands on your hips. If you're feeling quite tight in your hamstrings, then just bend your knees slightly. All you're, doing, all you're going to do is come forwards, sticking your hips out, all right, and then go as low as you can, but trying to keep, if you have a look there, your back straight. All right, now what I don't want to see is you're going down with your shoulders first and curling round. Okay, you've got to keep your shoulders back, you stick your hips out first, and you go down, keeping your back straight. Again, if you need to bend your knees, that's fine. And then from there, we're going to go into a streamlined position. We're going to hold it for one, and then release, and then two, and release, three, four, and five. Okay, and then back up into a standing position. Right, I want you all to do that one more time. I'm just gonna have a quick look at your technique. So maybe stand sideways on so that I can see. All right, and we're looking to see straight backs, okay? So Ivy Boaz, I can already see that them backs are curved. You've gotta keep those backs flat. Again, don't be afraid to bend your knees. Perhaps have a look in your computer screen if you can. All right, focus on trying to keep the bottom of your back flat. Now you might want to put your hands on your lower back and just feel, is it flat or is it curved? Such an important exercise this. We'll perhaps spend a little bit more time on it over the next few sessions. Okay, right. So we've done our activation, the last part of your warm up. So, this is the final bit before you would get into the pool is to do some priming, getting the muscles firing and ready to really um, swim fast. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do, let's just do some quick reaction work. All right, so we're going to go down into a half squat position. All right, make sure there's nothing above you, no light shades, nothing that you're going to hit. All right, and then on the go, all you're going to do is spring up into a streamlined position. All right, let's see how quick you can be. All right, hands out in front of you to start with. Okay, ready. Go. Okay, and again. Ready. Go. Okay, nice. Right, this time on the floor. All right, hands can be on the floor as well to start. Okay, ready, go. And up into streamline. And again, let's have a look. Let's see how quick you are. Okay, who's going to be quickest up? Ready, go. Oh, Torin, I think was quickest there. That was pretty good. Okay, last one. This time, led flat on your backs, not your fronts. Okay, all right, hands, let's go, hands up in the air this time, and you've got to get up without using your hands. So you're not allowed to use your hands. Ready, go. 
<laughs> Very good. Right, excellent. So we're going to go on to our balance and coordination. So today's session is not going to be intense. You're not going to be doing loads of high heart rate stuff, perhaps like you do on your PE with Joe or some of your cardio sessions. It's not about that. It's learning how to do movements correctly and learning how to control the movements. Things that we're going to eventually put into our swimming when we get back in the pool. So we're going to do, we've done the agility work um, that we did in the warm up. We're now going to do the balance and coordination. So to start with, let's find a good angle there. Right. So to start with, what you're going to do is put one foot in front of the other. All right, so you look from the side, one foot in front of the other like that. And all I all want you to do is hold in a straight line with your arms by your side. I just want you to hold that position without wobbling. All right, and just trying to balance. So you've got your front foot in, directly in front of your back foot. Just make note of what that is, whether it's your right or your left, and just hold that balanced position. Is anyone wobbling or are you straight? Okay, good. Now, if you're finding that quite easy, then close your eyes and let's see if you can hold that position with your eyes closed. Oh, it gets a little bit harder. I can see some of you wobbling already. So make sure there's nothing around you that you might crash into, no TVs. We don't want your parents' TVs uh, having a big hole in them by the end of this, all right? So if you are feeling a little bit unbalanced, then make sure that uh, you've got room around you, okay? Just hold that position with your eyes closed, see if you can balance. It is a little bit trickier than it might seem. I can see some wobbling. I'm already wobbling. Let's have a quick look. Okay, right, what I want you to do once you've done it on one leg, for, uh, one leg forwards, let's swap, all right, so let's go the opposite, so if it was your right leg in front, now put your left leg in front, and let's just do it eyes open to start, let's see if you can hold that position with your eyes open. Now, even that's tricky for some of you, <laughs> some of you wobbling with your eyes open. That's pretty good. Right, now close your eyes. Let's see if you can hold that position with your eyes closed. Whoa, we've got some wobblers already. <laughs> some of you pretty good, looking stable. Now, in order to keep your balance, you've got to keep your core engaged. You've got to have strong legs. You might want to keep your arms out just to help balance a little bit. Okay, good. Right, so we're going to go through a few different movements like this using that position. So let's swap again back to the opposite foot in front. So I'm using my right foot in front, left foot behind. All right, now to start with, we're going to do it with eyes open. All right, even then, it's sometimes a little hard to balance if you've got your feet directly in line. And we're going to go through some different movements. So to start with, put your arms out to the side. Now bring your arms in front. Now let's rotate. So you've got one arm in front, one arm behind. And then swap. One arm in front, one arm behind. And then back forwards. Okay. All right, arms in a W position with your hands pointing upwards. And then you're just going to come up into streamlines, staying balanced, holding that position, and then back down. All right, let's do that again. Up. And then back down. Can you stay still? Can you hold that position without wobbling? Back up. And back down. Right. Now we're going to do it with our eyes closed. All right, a little bit more tricky. So to start with, arms out to the side, eyes closed. All right, then arms in front. Okay, then, oh, even I'm wobbling already. One arm out behind you, rotate. Be careful if you are next to anything, make sure the room is clear 
and then back, rotate again, Oop. and then back, and then arms into a W position, and then up into streamline. It's a lot harder with your eyes closed, and then down, Oop. and then back up. And down, last one, and down. Good. All right, let's swap it over. All right, so left foot in front this time. Make sure your feet are directly behind you. Arms out to the side. Uh, arms in front. Okay, and bring one arm round back. And then swap it over. And then into W position, into streamline. Okay, three streamline movements. Okay, and let's give it a go now with your eyes closed. I'm gonna have a look at it again. Let's have a quick look and see how we're getting on. So to start off with, arms out to the side, eyes closed this time. Okay, arms in front. Make sure them feet are directly behind each other. Okay, one arm back. Rotate round and swap it over. Bring it back to the front, the other arm round. That's it. Then into W position. And then into streamline, three streamlines. Let's see if you can stay balanced. It's hard with your eyes closed. Good, Laura. Good. Okay, very good. Excellent, right. Okay, so this time, we're gonna see how good we are at balancing on one leg. So you're going to bring one leg up, it's 90 degrees. Okay, and this time we're going to go into a streamline straight away. All right, so up into streamline. Hold that position. All right, now if you can hold that position in streamline, very good. I then want you to bring your body forwards. See if you can hold that balance. Bring your leg behind. See if you can hold a nice straight line from your fingertips all the way through to your feet. Okay, so again, watch from the side if you can see that there. All right, so you're balancing. So to start with, hands on your hips, bring up one leg. All right, now if you're finding it really hard to do it in streamline, you can do it with your hands on your hips. But to start with, bring your arms up in streamline. See if you can hold that position. If you are wobbling already, then put your hands back down on your hips. And then you've got to go out. Just slowly think about that position we did right at the start with that flat back. Arms out, leg out, and then back up. Okay. Good, right, swap legs. Let's have a watch. Let's see who can do it on the opposite leg. So left leg. So start off balancing, bring your knee up to 90 degrees. That's it. And then see if you can get into a streamline, holding that balance. Good. Once you've once you've got that balance, don't rush it. Don't do it too quick. All right, let's see if you can do it slowly for one leg out. We've got some wobbly people. All right, it's something that you perhaps don't think about is how how good your balance is. All right, you actually need good balance when you're on the block. This is a good drill for helping you on the blocks. All right, it's similar to a starting position. Okay, right. Last little bit then of uh, balancing, and then we're going to finish off with some ankle flexibility. All right, so let's make it a little bit more fun. All right, so we're gonna start off 
back on one leg. All right. All right, we're going to do some different movements. So arms out to the side, arms on your head, arms on your belly. Okay, arms into a backstroke swimming position. So backstroke swimming. Whoop. That's it. Into front crawl swimming. Good. Pat your belly. Rub your head. Can you do that? Whoop. Pat your belly, rub your head. And now tap your head, rub your belly. Good. Arms out to the side. Hands on your hips. Arms in street line. Good. And swap over. Other leg. Arms out to the side. Hands on your hips. Hands on your head. Hands in streamline. Okay, backstroke swimming. If you've been watching the mirror swimming videos, we should see some really good backstroke technique. Okay, front crawl swimming. That's it, pat your belly, rub your head. Can you do it the other way around? So tap your head, rub your belly. Good, arms out to the side, and then back down. Right, good. So, last thing we're gonna do before we finish is some flexibility in our ankles. All right, now, ankle flexibility is probably the biggest reason why people are not very good at kick. All right, it's nothing to do with leg strength. It's to do with flexibility, usually in your ankles. Could also be to do with flexibility in your hips, in your hamstrings. But most of the time, it's because your ankles are too stiff. When you kick, you need to have really flexible ankles. So you're not kicking the water up and down but you're actually kicking the water backwards, all right? It's not just on front crawl, but it's on butterfly as well. And obviously breaststroke, a little bit different, but your ankles need to be able to turn out and whip round. So we need to have really flexible ankles. Now this is where the ruler is going to come in. Now, if you've got a partner, someone with you, or if you've got a parent, what I want us to do to start with is measure what our ankle flexibility is like. So I'm just gonna get my ruler, just one sec. I can find it. Oh, I think it's here. Give me one second, just getting my ruler. I think Lou is hidden it. Okay, found, found a tape measure instead. All right, now what we're going to do is measure our ankle flexibility. So to start with, you need to have your knees flat on the floor, your back straight, and your ankles on the floor. Point your toes up to the ceiling to start with, and then you're going to point your toes as far down to the floor as possible. All right, now you can see there's a very small gap between my toes and the floor, and that's what you're going to measure, all right? So you're going to measure, from your toe, the outside toe here, down to the floor. All right, now obviously with your legs straight and your ankles flat on the floor, your heels flat on the floor, your knee flat on the floor, you're going to measure that gap, all right? So you watch, and you'll be measuring basically from here down to the floor. And you're gonna measure on both feet because it might be that one foot is more flexible than the other, all right? So let's just see, you've got to start up straight, knees have got to be flat on the floor. If your knees are not on the floor, it's a lot easier to get your toes onto the floor. All right? Now, I used to be quite a good kicker, so I have relatively good flexibility. All right, it'd be really good to see if anyone can get all the way down to the floor. But maybe measure it not just in centimeters, maybe measure it in millimeters. And then the goal is going to be to see whether we could improve that over the next few weeks. We're actually gonna be finishing off with ankle flexibility on every session, all right? And especially if you've been doing a lot of running recently, 
and a lot of cycling, you've been probably in that position with your feet, you've been quite flat footed, you're gonna have to work at keeping those ankles flexible. All right? So the first one we're gonna do just to get the ankles warmed up. All right, once you've measured it, you don't have to perhaps measure it straight away. If you've not got anyone with you, you can do it uh, after the session's finished. But all you're gonna do is point your toes down and then point them back up. And I want you to just make that range as big as possible. All right, so 10 of these to start with. What's that? Nine centimeters from David, nine centimeters. So your goal, David, is to try and bring that down over these next few weeks. Okay, so you're just starting off with this ankle movement. You record these, you don't have to, uh, to send them all in, you can do, all right, but you record them and maybe measure it every week and see if it is improving. Okay, right, once you've done 10 of those, we're then just going to rotate our ankles. All right, so from there, you're going to rotate them round in a circle. You're gonna go 10 one way and then 10 the other. Those that are not doing it, come on, let's have a look. Let's see you doing it. Okay, and then the other 10 one way. And then 10 the other. That's it. And then to finish, and you can do this Anytime you want when you're watching TV or reading or doing anything at home, it's just to sit on your ankles. Now you might feel quite tight through your quads, so you might need to stretch the top of your legs first, but you're then just going to come and just sit back gently onto your ankles just for a few seconds, holding that maybe for around five seconds and then back down. Okay, now if you're finding that's really tight and you can't get your knees uh, lifting off the floor without it hurting a lot, then just put your hands back and just lean back slightly. So you're not going to the point where it's hurting loads, but just enough so that you feel the stretch. All right, if you have a look at your feet, feet should be pointing backwards. All right, and you should have your hips directly over your heels. You're just lifting up for around no more than five seconds and then back down. All right, now when I used to swim, I used to be a good kicker. I used to be able to get my knees pretty much all the way up to my chest on this. All right, I had really good flexibility in my ankles. Not so good anymore, all right, but the goal is to try and obviously get your knees even higher. Now obviously don't go too far, all right, because if it hurts, you don't want it to hurt. It shouldn't feel too painful, but you should feel the stretch in the top of your ankles here, okay? And just to finish off, once you've done a few of those, you're just going to just loosen off your feet, a few circles, different directions, and just up and down, okay? So we're gonna finish off every session with some ankle flexibility. We are going to leave it there, guys, but well done. You've done a great job for our first session. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, a little bit different. Um, on Thursday, we're going to be doing a little bit more um, movement exercises, uh, as well as some more of the uh, mobility in the warm-up. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.